Okay, so we're doing immunity in plants and animals in this lesson. So, what are we uh, tissues that are going to be involved in this? In human, it's going to be white blood cells, mainly, and your skin. We're going to do a bit more detail than just white blood cells. And then your skin, which is the first barrier against any disease that we can pick up. On plants, they also have an immune response. They have like we have skin, they have claws that prevents any of the viruses getting into the tree. And also they would have a waxy cuticle. They can also have some secretions that they can if, uh, secrete to prevent infection. And we even also use some of those secretions. Like for example, uh, bioflavonoids like vitamin C, we actually use. That to prevent disease in ourselves. Okay, so passive immunity in animals. Uh, passive immunity involves our body's ability to produce mucus in the nose and the throat and tears in the eyes to prevent any foreign substances from getting into our orifices, into the holes in our body. Also, we have the skin. It's a barrier against uh, that prevents bacteria and viruses and other pathogens from getting in. Passive immunity in plants involves any sticky secretions that it might have um, and that make it difficult for the plant to be eaten and uh, po it might be poisonous for the animal that's eating it. Also, as I said, fruits that contain a lot of vitamin C, which is bioflavonoids. Uh, that is also actually an antibacterial, an antiviral compound. And unfortunately for the tree, or fortunately for the existence of the tree, we also find that useful. And actually, instead of disturbing us from eating the plant, we actually like it. We actually like the taste of vitamin C. The bacteria and the virus doesn't, but we do. And it's an advantage to us because if we eat the vitamin C, the amount of vitamin C builds up in our body, and what happens is that now we can use that to deter viruses and bacteria. Okay, um, and so that is an advantage to us. Why is it an advantage then in the long term for the plant? Because now we specifically plant the tree, so for the survival of the plant is important. Because now we're actually helping the tree to planting the tree because we want that vitamin C, we want those oranges, we want those kiwi fruits and those berries um, to be, uh, uh, like blueberries contain a lot of vitamin C, kiwi fruit, lots of vitamin C, any nectarines like oranges and nautis, those contain a lot of vitamin C. Um, active immunity in animals, so in humans, um, we, we have we can get where the disease actually does enter. Normally it enters through if it broke your skin. And of course certain areas like why are we covering our faces? Because of our nose and our mouth. Those are favorite areas of entry. Ears might be another one. Eyes might be another one. The nose and the mouth is a very common one. Especially for corona type viruses. The white blood cells and lymphocytes produce antibodies which then combine to the pathogen to destroy it. So we have white blood cells that are going to uh, start identifying the foreign substance and then start attacking that foreign substance and actually digesting it, eating it. Some lymphocytes become memory cells that will then destroy the pathogen if it ever enters the body again. And we call this acquired immunity. So if you have a certain flu virus inside of you, your body can act, uh, immediately identify if that virus enters again and it can immediately launch it an attack. So you become immune against that specific type of virus. And that's what we hope it will happen at the moment, is that we will become immune because our body already is identifying the coronavirus and then attacking it. And that is also why we um, we would then take vaccination. So what is vaccination? We take a weakened virus, genetically weakened virus, or we take a dead virus 
and we actually inject ourselves with that weakened organic virus. So our body recognizes it and already starts building up these recognizers, these um, antibodies, so that when the real virus comes along, our body can immediately attack. And it doesn't have to worry about is it actually a foreign substance or not. It immediately identifies it as a foreign substance and attacks it. We're going to do a little bit more about that in the next lesson. Okay. So in immunity, people, so in an immunity, that is your passive immunity, and then we have acquired immunity, we have active and passive acquired immunity, and we also have artificial immunity, where, for example, if we do the vaccination, or we can pick up the, it naturally. Now, most childhood diseases, we pick that up naturally. Uh, so, if you uh, have a certain child disease, chances are you won't have it again because you already have antibodies in your body preventing you from getting it. Okay, so plants can also have an active immunity response. Um, when a part of the plant is infected, uh, what will happen is that it will then have a systemic acquired resistance to the to the specific bug that is invading it. It will secrete things like salicylic acid and then also um, that is the main one. Also um, this salicylic acid and whatever comes with it, like for example, it gets converted to methyl salicylate. And that builds up and is carried um, to other tissues in the plant. And so, even if the infection is only in a certain place, the whole plant is going to become immune because it's going to get carried to its body, and then that helps to prevent further infections. Okay, people, let me play you. Let me stop this. <laughs>